The comet is on an extremely unusual path, moving too fast to be bound by the sun's gravity, breaking a typically seen orbital trajectory. And while this comet poses no current threat, Professor Lowe believes more data should be collected to uncover the nature of this object and whether it has the potential to create risks in the future. That this object might actually be alien technology rather than just another comet. What exactly about the speed, the trajectory, the behavior leads you to consider this as a possibility? Well, first, it's uh, relatively bright uh, for its distance, implying that if it's a solid object, it has to be 20 kilometers in diameter. That's uh, twice as big as the giant asteroid that killed the dinosaurs 66 million years ago. And the previous objects we saw from interstellar space were only hundreds of meters in size. So there is just not enough rocky material in interstellar space to provide us with a 20 kilometer rock that uh, appears once per decade. Uh, but uh, more importantly, the trajectory is very unusual. Uh, it's aligned with the orbit of the Earth around the Sun. It just showed up in our cosmic backyard, a traveler from between the stars. This is not a drill. In July of 2025, astronomers confirmed a brand new interstellar visitor. Its name is 3I Atlas, and it is fundamentally alien to our solar system. It's blazing through space at a staggering 58 kilometers per second. Let me put that in perspective. That's fast enough to guarantee it's just passing through. A tourist that will never, ever return. In fact, this is only the third interstellar object humanity has ever detected. The third postcard we've ever received from another planetary system. But this one, this one is different. It seems bigger, faster, and it's carrying a message. A message written in a strange, shimmering halo of gas and dust. And for the first time in history, we had a fleet of super telescopes ready and waiting. NASA's brand new SphereX Observatory and the mighty James Webb Space Telescope. They turned their powerful eyes toward this ghost from the void. And the first images, the first real data, are just coming in. What they are revealing is already changing everything. The first alerts went out in early July. A new object spotted on an impossible trajectory. Its path was the first red flag. It wasn't a gentle, looping orbit like our planets. It was a sharp, aggressive slash across the solar system. In technical terms, its orbital eccentricity was about 6.2. Anything over one means it's not bound to our sun. 6.2? That's a clear sign of an alien origin. This thing was just passing through, and it was moving fast. Initial observations suggested it was a monster maybe 10, even 30 kilometers across. A giant, icy nucleus sent from a distant star. The astronomical community was buzzing. But then, the puzzles began. On July 21st, we pointed to Veteran, the Hubble Space Telescope, and Hubble delivered a shock. The solid core of the nucleus was tiny, no larger than five kilometers across. So that massive object everyone was seeing, it was an illusion a ghostly shroud of gas and dust, a coma, hiding a much smaller heart. And weirder still, no tail, just this enormous, bright, fuzzy ball. The first great mystery, what was feeding this massive cloud? To answer that, NASA called in the specialists. First up, the new kid on the block, Spherex, a telescope designed to see the universe in a way nothing else can. Between August 7th and 15th, it stared at 3i Atlas, and it got the answer. A bright, extended halo of carbon dioxide gas, CO2, the same stuff that makes the fizz in your soda. Essentially, a giant cloud of sublimating dry ice. But just as important was what Spherex didn't see. No significant water vapor, no real sign of carbon monoxide. This was not a typical water ice comet, like the ones we know. This was something else entirely. Then came the final verdict from the heavyweight champion, the James Webb Space Telescope. On August 6, Webb aimed its golden mirror and it confirmed the headline. The comet was powered by CO2, but Webb's incredible sensitivity added a crucial twist. It found faint, almost hidden evidence of water ice on the surface, a tiny breath of water vapor, and just a trace of carbon monoxide. So the picture suddenly became much more complex. 
This wasn't just a simple dry ice common. It was an ancient traveler with a complicated past. And that's where the real science begins. So what does this all mean? Why is a comet powered by dry ice such a big deal? Well, to understand that, you need to meet its older siblings. Before three Iapolis, we'd only had two confirmed interstellar visitors. Each one was a puzzle, but for completely opposite reasons. First, there was a Muamua, the pioneer. It was a ghost, a dark, rocky, cigar-shaped object tumbling through our system. It gave off no gas, no dust, nothing. Just a bizarre shape and a trajectory that screamed, I'm not from here. Oumuamua was like finding a piece of cosmic driftwood. Ancient, exhausted and silent about where it came from. Then we met Borisov. And Borisov was a complete opposite. It was a spectacular, pristine comet. It looked and acted just like the comets from our own Kuiper Belt. It was rich in water, spewing gas and dust, and grew a beautiful tail. Borisov was almost too normal. It told us that other star systems make comets just like ours. So we had two extremes, a dead rock and a fresh snowball. It left a massive hole in our understanding of what's out there. And now, three Iatlas has arrived to fill that gap. It's the missing link. It's not dead like Oumuamua, but it's not pristine like Borisov either. It's an evolved comet. Its main engine isn't a melting of water ice, which drives most comets we know. Its engine is a sublimation of carbon dioxide, a much more volatile process that can happen further from the sun. And here's the fascinating part. We have actually seen something like this before, right here at home. A comet in our own solar system, named Hartley II, is also unusually rich in CO2. It proves this recipe is possible, just maybe not common. So where would a comet like this come from? The leading theory is that 3i Atlas is a refugee from the Milky Way's thick disk. Imagine our galaxy is a vinyl record. Most young stars, like our sun, are in the thin, flat part of the record. The thick disk is an older, puffier halo star surrounding that. It's a rougher, a more ancient neighborhood. The story goes like this. 3i Atlas was born in a normal planetary system billions of years ago, but it got kicked out. It then spent eons, maybe billions of years, wandering for the harsh environment of a thick disk. Over that immense journey, the faint warmth and radiation of interstellar space slowly cooked it. It baked away the most fragile, fluffy ices. All that was left was the tougher stuff, the more resilient carbon dioxide, and the even more stubborn water ice buried underneath. The comet we see today is a survivor. Its chemical makeup isn't just a list of ingredients. It's a travel diary, written over billions of years and delivered right to our doorstep. So the story of 3i Atlas is far from over. In fact, it's heading for its most dramatic moment, the end of October 2025. That's when it will make its perihelion, its closest approach to our sun. It will swing by at a distance of about 1.36 astronomical units. That's just a little bit further out than the orbit of Mars. And as it gets warmer, we get to the biggest question of all. Will this comet change its identity? As the sun's heat bakes its surface, will that deeper, more resilient water ice finally begin to erupt? Will the quiet breath of water vapor that Webb detected turn into a roar? Could 3i Atlas transform from a CO2-driven curiosity into a more familiar water ice comet right before our eyes? Observing this will be a challenge. Earth's position in its own orbit will make it hard to get a clear view during the peak of the flyby, but teams around the world will be watching it intensely before and long after. They will be hunting for any change in its chemical fingerprint. But here's the real headline, the true implication of this discovery. 3i Atlas, Oumuamua, Borisov, these visitors are no longer just rare celestial miracles. They are the advance wave of a coming flood because soon, a new eye will open on the sky. The Vera C. Rubin Observatory. Think of it as the ultimate cosmic net. An observatory designed to scan the entire visible sky every few nights. And its projections are staggering. It's expected to find not one or two, but dozens of new interstellar objects every single decade. We are about to go from having a handful of data points to building a library. 
a catalog of visitors from other stars will finally be able to ask the big questions. What is the most common type of object drifting between the stars? Are they mostly pristine snowballs like Borsov, or weathered survivors like 3 Eye Atlas, or are they something else entirely? Each new object will be a direct chemical sample from another solar system, a piece of a planet-forming disk, delivered right to us. We are standing at a threshold, moving from the shock of first contact to a routine conversation with the galaxy. So in the end, we have a new portrait of a traveler, 3 Eye Atlas, not a dead rock like Oumuamua, not a pristine snowball like Borisov. It's a survivor, an ancient messenger powered by a ghostly halo carbon dioxide, telling the story of a long and difficult journey. For years, we had two baffling, contradictory clues about visitors from deep space. 3 Eye Atlas is a Rosetta Stone that finally connects them. It proves that the journey itself matters, that the vast, empty space between stars isn't empty at all. It's an environment that grinds, shapes, and evolves these objects over billions of years. And that realization is profound, because it means the star systems in our galaxy are not isolated islands. They are connected. They are constantly trading the very building blocks of planets across unimaginable distances. We don't just live in a galaxy. We live in a cosmic ecosystem where the chemistry of one star system can be delivered directly to another. And that leaves us with a final, staggering thought. If the raw ingredients for planets are constantly being thrown from star to star, what does that mean for the raw ingredients of life? Are we simply watching rocks and ice fly by? Or are we witnessing the seeds of new worlds being sown across the cosmos? This new era of astronomy has only just begun, and the implications are breathtaking. What you believe is the biggest secret these interstellar messengers are carrying? Let me know your theories in the comments below.